Coming at you today in Clash Royale. Today, I'm so thrilled to be joined on voice again by with the Romanian pro Royal. Royal, welcome back to the channel, man. Hey, Ash, thanks for having me on. It's always a pleasure, dude. And I I'm so excited to have you on. First of all, congratulations on finishing third last season. Is this like how many top five finishes do you have now? I feel like every season you're top five. So, for the past three seasons, I finished sixth, second, and third. But in total, I have um, one second. I only have three top five finishes, but I have like 20 top 10 finishes. Dude, insane. And you're one of the, honestly, you're one of the few players who can cross over to be like a ladder beast and also one of the best in the world, if not the best in the world in CRL at tournament level standard. What are your thoughts on the differences between ladder and tournament level standard as a pro player? So in CRL, People are great with a lot of decks, but they aren't really a specialist with it. But on leather, it's really, I, I would say leather is harder because you face really good players with their best decks and they know pretty much every matchup. Yeah, because you know exactly what they're going to play going on. And does, does obviously bans change a lot in CRL, but are, are you a believer in the ban in banned cards? Do you like that format? Uh, in the beginning, I didn't like that because I only knew how to play a few decks, but now I really enjoy it because it adds a little bit more versatility to the game. Yeah, for sure. I, I enjoy watching load the band format as well. And uh, today you are like the goal of master, but yet you're you're an everything master. I just wanted to be, this is the deck by the way that we're gonna be playing live on ladder. He's currently 25th in the world. Uh, but I, I gotta ask you though, like you had a reputation as always being an incredibly good player in the game, but now your stock has risen to where people, myself included, really consider you the best player in the world, if not like top three in the world. I gotta ask like, how does that that, has that changed you at all and did you like being a little bit maybe a little bit more under the radar and now you have the spotlight on you you know it didn't really change me there are pros and cons like it's, of course it feels great people recognizing and like you know that you are a good player but also it kind of sucks because now everybody's expecting you to win every game and <laughs> yeah of, of course that's impossible so of course because even like the best players you know obviously in crl they'll win like 70 ish percent of their 1v1 matches but even that is really difficult to do and, and it's uh i don't know it's a challenge so good luck in the uh the world finals man thank you all right well let's go ahead and hop right into a live match here you switched up the deck a little bit last time that you were on the channel or actually last time you were on the channel you had a fire spirits version of a golem deck but now you have a, then you played an ice wizard nato version with a tombstone then you subbed in after the tombstone nerf the bar barrel and now because you don't have the tombstone for the pekka you're back to the night witch in there as well so maybe as we search for our first match here if you can kind of give your sense on the state of golem and why you prefer this deck right now uh compared to the other ones yeah i already found a game i oh, think wow. i'm gonna talk while play we actually got to talking and i kind of want you to answer this at the start of the uh the match here is this Royal, what would you recommend my viewers upgrade? Say they're maybe they're not a golem player, or maybe they want to be. They want to start upgrading their golem deck. What cards should they prioritize upgrading? So after making the golem, I would say you should upgrade Mega Minion and Baby Dragon, because basically those are in every golem deck. Mm -hmm. They're they're working really well. And then I would go for a spell either. Poison or Lightning, because Fireball is not that good. It's only good in certain matchups. Okay, so interesting answer, but it's a good point about the, the e no matter what the meta, you're right, Baby Dragon Mega Minion seems to be like staple support cards of, of Golem decks, so. Uh, yeah, exactly. Good point. I need to start asking that more often here on the channel about like card upgrade <laughs> strategy for decks and a Royal Giant Cannon Cart deck. Uh, exciting matchup here. <laughs> Yeah, so he spent Cannon Card and Royal Giant, there's no way he can punish me. He also has to defend the Lumberjack so I can safely go in with the Golem. Yep, he activates King Tower there, but you, like you said, you have a pretty decent Elixir lead here, uh, considering you do have the Golem down. So, it, it still is single Elixir time, so are you just going to unload, or it just all depend on what he does here, in terms of supporting this? Try to like, support it, I know he, he used Nader, so I can... Okay, I'm going to try to Nader everything. 
I think he has Mega Mionis as well. No. I wasn't playing it. Okay. Yeah. Nope, no Mega Minion, but nice lightning. Yeah. But you're gonna support that knowing that he's really low on Elixir. He still has that. It was a plus two for him, so we should be kinda even right now. Mm -hmm. Now yeah. I, I can drop the Golem because he's back or Royal Giant in Canon Car, so I'll have to wait for him to do something. Yeah. With a, with, a, with a deck like this, uh, how often, or as just as a Golem Pro yourself, how often would you say you're dropping your Golem at the bridge versus behind the King Tower? So, actually in, uh, in Double Elixir time I never drop it. I mean, I usually don't drop it um, in the back, I drop it on the corner, because I realize I don't really need that extra time, that like, dropping it in the corner is enough to okay. already gain enough Elixir. Easily take care of that cannon cart there, and again, he's using a lot of elixir, kind of trying to go opposite lanes. So hopefully, now that we have 20-ish seconds left here, gonna go in. Yeah, that baby dragon's gonna clean up his baby dragon, then engage on that tombstone. He has lightning in hand, but there it goes. Um, his defense is, is, is really good. Yeah, it's kind of annoying deck because his lightning can basically wipe out your support cards. Oh, he, got, he went the other lane. I have to defend first. I don't want to risk it. Yeah. Sometimes risk is his war, but uh -huh. overall I would not do that. Interesting to see somebody playing the cannon cart right after the uh, the nerf to it. Uh, but obviously the deck must be working for him. He's going to hit the opposite lane here. Yeah, Ooh, so he lightning yeah. there, but... Oh. Ah. oh my god, dude. I'm pretty sure he's going to defend. Nice NATO there. He has lightning, I wonder if he'll use it here. Nope. Ooh. Ooh. Man, the raged up baby drags are no joke, dude. There we go. Nice. That was actually a really good job, impressive job on your part, having the wherewithal to, to save that elixir to defend against that cannon cart there. I think that some people would be tempted to just keep going and going and going and poison right away, you know? So like, he already had uh, Ice Wizard, so I don't think it would be a good idea to go with the um, Lumberjack, because he, all he had to do was just Nado. Yeah. And then Poison, I didn't want to risk it because I wasn't sure how many shots the Baby Dragon is going to get, so I was just basically waiting. Okay, well hey man, let's go ahead and search for the next match and see what we get. Okay. Ah, here we go, guys. So I wanted to ask you as we start this match here, uh, Royal, is is everybody says that Golem is a, is a no-skill deck or a low-skill deck, and obviously there is a lot of skill involved in being a great Golem player because there's very few people who can consistently be at the top of ladder, even though there's, there's thousands and thousands of people with max decks, or people who consistently rattle off 12 wins. So in your mind, like, what separates guys like you uh, Flobby, like the best golem players in the world. What do you think that you guys do differently? What does it come down to in your game style? So, besides patience, which is really, really important, I would also say... Um, so you basically want to keep track of your opponent's um, cycles and elixir, which is pretty easy because you don't have to drop a lot of one elixir cards, just your, your cards are pretty expensive, so it's pretty easy to concentrate and focus on keys or rotation. But then also you have to know when to go in, because if you can go in too aggressively, then he's going to punish you, and you won't have enough to like defend, defend his um, counter push. Mm -hmm. I would say patience is the most important thing. For example, now he already pumped twice, I didn't have poison, I know he's going to take the tower, there's no way to overcommit, and then killing my troops I will try to... Nice. Kill, so, his, 
That's a good example yeah. right there, yeah. Because, like, why why waste, you know, your baby dragon defending there? Now at least you have a surviving baby dragon, and you have poison back in hand. That was probably a really smart no poison there, too, right? Because instead you NATO, now you have poison ready, so next time he has three muskies, next time he tries to hit you with minion horde, or next time he pumps up, you have an answer. Yeah, because if you if you poison, like, first time I poisoned the 3M, because NATO wouldn't be enough to kill them. But now that NATO would have been enough, I just got, went for it, because I know he's going to try to pump again, and that's what... Yep. So, question for you regarding any deck that you're facing with an elixir pump is... I noticed that you didn't poison that first pump. I think it's because you didn't have poison in, in hand, though. Yeah, I didn't have poison. I would have. Okay, all right. When we are kind of even in Elixir, <clears throat> I like to go with the Golem, same lane as the 2M. Okay. So you have like a little bit of a Golem push ready. He's hitting you, obviously, pretty hard in the opposite lane. You're just going to poison that away, and you have Baby Dragon I'm going to poison well. that because... In double elixir, him having pumps is not going to hurt me that much, so I'm fine using poison on uh, offense. Okay. And getting back to what you were saying earlier about this, uh, about like what makes a great golem player different than you know just an average golem player like like yours truly, and you mentioned cycles <laughs> and and rotations and stuff like that in elixir. Do you have any like? I don't know. It's such a broad question, but do you have any tips on like as a golem player specifically? How to get better at those aspects? How to get better at counting this, or how to get better? I would at say it. practicing is basically the. Mm -hmm. Look at the golem. The golemites did so much damage there. Just a matter. You have NATO back in hand, I believe. Oh, baby dragon's gonna take care of it. So things got a little yeah. bit tight there, but the lumberjack just MVP on defense. Kind of a weird situation though, because it's not like you can just poison them out here. Yeah, <laughs> so, I can't poison this. Yeah. <laughs> oh. I would have to. I don't have anything. I have to go in there. And then, oh, he wastes his up. Okay. I think this one should be enough, because I have an Ictus that's defending the other lane. Mm -hmm. oh. Nice. Okay. So he's gonna mine her there. Maybe Dragon's gonna help I'll out. Defend it. Yeah. Golemites get a little bit of dice. Golemites take you to poison range. And there it is, man, with 535 left on your tower. Pick up the W. Well played there, man. That, how do you yeah, feel about three musketeer? I feel like that's a difficult matchup. Even though you have poison and NATO, I guess maybe it's not, but I, I don't know. I feel like it's always it really kind of scary, you know? I feel like Golem, Golem 3M matchup is a like graveyard. A lot of RNG involving because if they have pump, and you don't have poison, that's already a low situation for you, and it's really hard to come back. Mm -hmm. Good point. Well, let's go ahead and hop into match number three, and then maybe you can coach me on a, on a battle if that's cool with you. Yeah, for All sure. All right, let's do it. Be right back, guys. Here we go. Sweet. So we are now in the top ten, guys, on day two or three of the season. So big stuff going <laughs> on right now. Uh, going against uh, Mr. Mikey. So this guy's pretty high. He's like top five. Okay, all right. So this could be the battle. Another pump. What the heck? This time you do have poison in hand, though. Let's go. That's what I care about. What do you think would be like the biggest mistakes as, for for golem players? Uh, whether you're an experienced golem player or like if you just watch somebody else. Another three musky matchup. <laughs> nice. Basically the go. same thing. So I would say uh, a, a big mistake. Oh yeah. shit. <laughs> A big mistake would be having poison, but going with Golem. Okay, that's actually a good one, because... This guy has Royal Ghost though, so it's a little bit different. Yeah. Okay, he targeted the musket. Still a lot of damage, but... Yeah. I'm going to overcommit. So how much like damage are you... Obviously, every, every matchup is different, every deck is different, but like in general, like... Are you confident that you can lose a tower, even two towers, and it's still you can still definitely win that match going into double extra time against most so matchups? Two towers, I would never be confident. Okay. On matchup, the matchup, and then one tower, it's yeah, depending on matchup. You know, I noticed that you don't two. play a lot of golem in in CRL. Uh, is that because you figure everybody's going to play you for golem, or you just not think that golem is that strong at tournament level standard? So. I, th I think it's strong, but a lot of people were trying to counter me. Yeah. And then Luis was like, okay, 
he was trying to figure out when go with Golem with would work and when we would not because mm -hmm. obviously he was a big part of my success because he did so many good predictions on decks and stuff oh, and nice. what to run. Well, that's an interesting point that you bring up because like a lot of teams that kind of disappointed, like Team Liquid comes to mind, right? Is that everybody's expecting them to, myself included, to you know make the playoffs as a shoe in uh, given their roster, but they didn't have like a coach analyst, and you had like trainer Lewis and and uh, you know a lot of people helping out there. Do you think that actually made a big difference? Um, I don't know about other teams, but Lewis made a huge difference. Cool. Like every team is different. Every team is like teaching their players or coaching their players in a different way. For sure. And I guess even if you have, even if you're a really, really skilled player, you know, I think that just having an extra set of eyes like helping you along the way must make a, must must be pretty impactful. So it looks like you're gonna take the, take the left tower here. Defensively, uh, Bar Barrel's really coming in huge for you. And look at this push you have on the, on the tower right now. I don't know how, how but I, I somehow know, right? <laughs> To defend both lanes. <laughs> Somehow you managed to do it, man. And a quick 3 and 0. Let's see where you are. Again, I kind of tongue in cheek here because it's so early in the season. Royal only cares about top three finishes when he's at the end of the season. <laughs> but uh, but you are right now seventh. So uh, so good work, man. Are you ready? This is going to be the most difficult part of the video where you uh, you coach me. Uh, so <laughs> so one second before that. Yeah, sure. I can tell you what made the difference. Yeah, yeah, um, please. So in double elixir, he pumped again. You don't want to poison the pump because that way, if you poison, he will basically be tied between elixir. You want to let the poison be and just go with golem okay. and then nade all the 3M. So never poison the pump in double elixir. Just go with po with golem and all in. Okay, okay. That's a really, really important point. Glad you mentioned that. And uh, as I hop into a match here, one, one matchup that I always find difficult when playing golem is just like a giant deck. Like, for sake of argument, let's just say they're playing a, a giant mega minion, musketeer, mini pack deck, like an old school uh, deck. Uh, I had kind of a weird starting hand here, so I'm just going to wait till he does something. Uh, ah, man, archers. I guess Do I'm playing. Do you have mega minion? Uh, no, I just had Lumberjack, okay. Night Witch, and Golem at this point. Yeah, and that's the best NATO. play. So, I guess I'm just gonna Night Witch here. Yeah, Night Witch is the best because it's a slow troop. Yeah. If you drop Lumberjack, he's going to get in his base. Uh, I guess I'll just let that go. I don't think you no, would. No, Should I Golem here? Yeah, because if... Oh, you, you wanna drop the Golem like same, same tile as the Night Witch. So that way the Night Witch won't go in front. Okay, look at the okay. value. I don't know if I should have poisoned there, because I don't think I'm going to get to the tower. Maybe I will. Now the archers are going to really... Okay, so... I think... What did I do wrong there? I feel like I did a... I feel like there were maybe a few things I could have done better. Yeah, the poison was too much, because, like, it won't really help you get kill the eggs quicker. So okay. basically, I would just, like, wait for him to spend... If... If he would have dropped the archers, poisoning that would be fine. But only the eggs bow, not really worth it. Okay, I'm gonna bar barrel here, even though I know he has expo in hand, but I'm trying to kind of cycle to baby dragon and force him to do something here. So we get to the tower. I guess I'm just going to uh, lumberjack here, unfortunately. Uh, so I should have lumberjacked yeah. in the back, I so, imagine. No, 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 no. Okay. When he drops a siege card, try to like rush him, don't give him time to defend. So basically, okay. you want to go with him and lumberjack in the bridge as soon as he drops the siege. Okay. Even though it's more, it won't lock. Just go all in. Okay. If you drop troops in the, in the back, basically give him time to get enough elixir to defend the siege. Yeah, that's really a... I feel like that's really obvious now that you say it. Thanks for the tip. All right, yeah, so I guess I we're just gonna... Defend that. Yeah. Yeah. And then I would drop the golem in the middle. That way, the ex boy is going to lock on it. Okay, you can drop the golem in the back. Okay. There's no way he can punish you. Mm -hmm. So he has fireball in hand, so like a situation like this, uh, and I assume he could probably cycle to... I don't know, what should I do here? <laughs> uh, try to like, defend it with something. Defend those okay, fire spirits? Okay, yeah. yeah, it's fine. Sorry, Just okay. like, you should poison all that stuff. Okay. And then bar barrel the eggs, bro. Oh, actually, number trick is... Yeah. Oh, nice prediction. Oof. You got something there, I don't know what, probably yeah, the skill is. Maybe like, yeah. So I have NATO in hand. Uh, no, no, you should okay. you should uh, drop the golem again. Okay. Actually, doesn't matter anymore. I think yeah, I think that's GG. There we go. All right, so 
even though, first of all, like I couldn't ask for an easier matchup. Let's be honest, right? <laughs> uh, may, let's do. Let me do one more because I want a, a little bit more of a challenge. Even though I still managed to make uh, quite a, a, a few mistakes in that easy matchup. So let's go ahead and uh, and do one more here. Oh, but back to my giant question, uh, Royal. So. Oh yeah. I'm always kind of. They always hit me opposite lane as soon as I drop. Do you just never play uh, Golem when they have Giant in hand? Always start out with like Night Witch or something in the back. So honestly, against Giant, you really want to fully go on defense. Oh, until, should, I, should uh, I put that Golem at the bridge too? No, 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 no. Okay. no that Golem was good. Okay. So I'm just so gonna baby dragon. Golem. Yeah. If I can get. Okay. So Giant is really hard because even though they are like behind in Elixir, they can still punish you. Basically, you really want to go hard on. Oh crap. Okay, I have Bar Barrel, that's okay. Yeah. And Baby Dragon, I don't even need it, because Baby Dragon, I think... Nope. Damn it. Man, so I got now two sieges back to back. I guess, you know, the Clash Gods are on my side this time, guys. But anyway, I'm sorry, what were you saying? Can you just repeat that about the, uh, the Giant? I was too busy being a noob. Yeah. So against Giant, you basically want to defend as much as possible, because even though they have, like, Two or three elixir, even though they are like two or three elixir behind, they can still punish you. So you want to make sure the goal, the giant is really far away from getting back in hand again. Okay. Or just wait until double elixir. Okay. All right. Just gonna make a move here. And this one seems like I don't know. It's a pretty straightforward match. I'm just gonna try to build up enough elixir for Golem to distract every time I have it. And do you think that? What do you? What do you? I'm gonna poison this. Should I poison this? Uh, do you have Barbara? I do have Barbara. Yeah. Yeah, you should Barbara. Okay. But you should do it like the. Uh, sorry. Three, three, <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> I should have done so it. You what can, were you saying? So like, do it a little bit closer to your base, so you can bait the Rascal boy, so he won't get to the tower. Okay, that's smart. So I'm just gonna poison because I have enough answers to the Skelly Barrel that I'm not like super worried about it. You can just let it. Oh, never mind. I have. I'll have NATO back in hand. And I can just do this. And just as long as it's them. not. Okay, he can defend that. At this point, you can just go all in on uh, uh, defense. You should not be able to break through. Yeah, so just keep exhausting my support cards and just kind of waiting him out here. Yeah, Night is just good because he's in the middle. Then if he goes with the mortars in the other lane, and to target the Night Witch. Like, right now. Yeah. Cool. Alright, well hey. Like I said, <laughs> you know what? I wish I had had harder matchups, but that's the that's the thing about these live matches, guys. There's not much you can do. Uh, just gotta take what they give you. But hey, Royal, thank you so much again for coming on, man. It's you're always one of my favorite guests. Just it's so awesome to learn from one of the best at a given. Uh, well, I shouldn't, shouldn't even have to say have to say at a given archetype. Just one of the best in the world. So thanks again for coming on, man. I appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for having me. It's always a great pleasure to be here and talk with you. Yeah, thanks, man. I appreciate it. And uh, best of luck again in the uh, World Finals. I'll see you in Japan in a few weeks, man. Yeah, thank you. We'll need it. <laughs> All right. It's going to be a good one. Guys, make sure you check out Royal and the Immortals team uh, in the World Finals in Japan. I'll also be there, so maybe you guys will see me as well. Again, a huge shout-out to Royal. Check out his player stats and profile, his Twitter, anything social media related. will all be linked in the show notes below along with the deck link, guys. So hope you enjoyed this video as much as I did. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, take care, guys.